Should I read? Yeah, okay. Galatians 5, verse 16. It says, These I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings and such like of the which i tell you before as i have also told you in the past that they we do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god thank you god bless you so we see what he's saying us here you know that the flesh and the spirit are at war they're at war so that is why certain things all those wrong things still come to our mind when it comes to your mind, you haven't seen. But it's when you think of them and act on them that it becomes sin. So, we must do away. From 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, or lasciviousness, adultery, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, abuse of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, Envy, murder, drunkenness, reveries, or party spirit, and, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Anyone who practices all these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible has said it, QED. If there is any of them still in our lives, we need to pray seriously and tell God, help us. Because we cannot do it on our own. We cannot live for God on our own. Without the Holy Spirit of God, believe us, we cannot make it. So we have to surrender anything that is trying to hinder us or is trying to be a, a kind of a, a, a besetting sin or hindrance to us. We surrender it and God will take it away from us. When we become born again, we are filled with the Spirit of God and we walk in the fruits of the Spirit. Which are, from verse 22, it says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. These are the things we will be walking in. These nine, nine, nine uh, attributes and qualities of of, of the Spirit of God. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things there is no law. And he says, And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we are born again, we need to crucify this our flesh with its passions and desires. We no longer, we will no longer be people who are driven by natural wants or natural things, the things we see, the things that the world see and love, we should not be driven by them. Our main goal is to make heaven. Our focus will be on Christ and heaven. And Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added to us. So let our focus be in heaven, to make heaven. And then God will see us through, in Jesus' name. Amen. It says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be, become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So may the Spirit of God help us to run this race successfully and make it right into His kingdom. Another place I want us to see is Colossians 3. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 1 to 17.
Colossians 3, 1 to 17. Yes. If you then be risen with Christ, see those things which are above. We are Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your attention on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. Modify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things seek the wrath of God, comment on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time, when ye lived in them. But now ye also put on these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, frailty, communication, out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put on the put up the old man with his deed, and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Wherefore there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, Christian, born nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore as an elect of God, holy and beloved boys of mercy, kindness and humbleness. Of mind, meekness, and long suffering, forgiving one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you, in all wisdom, teaching and admission one another, in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, sing with grace. In the heart of the Lord, and whosoever ye do, whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is pure word of God, and if we abide by it, if we abide by it, the Holy Spirit will, will will abide and remain in us. Always. He says, if you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting, at the right hand of God. If we are truly born again, if we are truly followers of Jesus Christ, if we are true disciples of Jesus Christ, we must seek the things above. not things here below, here on earth. We must set our minds on things above and not things on earth. It's very unfortunate that many Christians today are setting their minds on things on earth. Very, very unfortunate. If you thought they would quote the Bible, <coughs> they would quote one place. It's not that prosperity is for children of God, but it's not as people, are, 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 people put it today. Some men of God have even erased themselves through through children of God, and after enslaved them, make them to be to be like uh, well, I don't know. It's very unfortunate. And if you talk, I will say, don't talk against man of God. You say man of God. What kind of man of God? If you're a man of God, you don't need. You must do things according to as Christ did. Our home is not here. We are strangers here on earth. We are passing by. We need all these things, God knows. And we work hard to get them because God doesn't throw anything from, from heaven. And then let it not be our focus. Let our focus be where we are going. So that nothing will distract us and devil will not be able to bribe us or hold us with anything. So we have to set our minds on things above, not on things on earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you and we also appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is adultery. You see, everywhere, everywhere, the word of God is talking this fornication and adultery. And today we see in the world it's very rampant. Like here in the West, we don't take it as anything anymore. 
take it as just just a simple thing. After all, my body belongs to me. I can do whatever I want to do with it. But God is not pleased with such kind of life. God is against it. Evil desires and covetousness, which is adultery. Covetousness. Many preachers uh, don't even know that they are coveting. You name it and claim it and you have it. You want to build uh, this on the air. There's nothing wrong in it if God blesses you. With all those, but let, let that not be our focus. Let that sort of because if our focus is on that, we will marginalize and do a lot of things that will that God is against. So because of these things, the love of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And that is being born again. When you put off all these things, that is you being born again. But when all these things are still in us, and we are claiming we are reigning with Christ, are we really reigning with him? We need to put off all those stuffs. Hate what God says we should hate. Or what God hates. And we have to put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, uncircumcised, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, sincere, slave, not free, the Christ is all in all. No more divisions. No more uh, uh, segregations. No more sabbatism. No more this, is, this person is this, this person is that. We are one in Christ. And Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, wrong suffering, Hearing with one another, I mean, sorry, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Love is very, very important. I'm telling you, if all of you will love one another as you are doing now, the heaven is your limit. God will add many to you. And Christ said, if by this they shall know that we are the disciples, if we love one another. But above all, all these things, put on okay, sorry, uh, put on love. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace with your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. <coughs> Thank God you have a, a, a worship leader as leader of this group. So we'll all be joyful in the spirit in singing hymns and, and uh, psalms. Be, always be, 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 you know, songs, songs, they, how will I put it? They make the spirit, spirit to rejoice, especially spiritual songs. So we need a, a lot of them. You sing in praising God, worshiping Him. Whenever you gather, make sure you have a session of uh, praise and worship. Because it's very powerful when we are praising God. There was a study we did. It says that God comes down when we are praising Him. He comes down. But when we pray, He sends angels. So make uh, praise and worship a very uh, 